today we'll be talking about neuron anatomy. A neuron is the most basic functional unit within the nervous system. And I've drawn here two typical neurons that you'll find within our nervous system, especially the peripheral nervous system. Now you have to remember with the neuron, they're basically cells, but only specialized. So like all cells, neurons still have a nucleus and other organelles, such as mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus. However, with the neuron, we have a technical term for that cell body. So, it's known as the soma. So we'll be using soma throughout the video. Now, on the soma, you can see these branch-like projections that come off. These branch-like projections basically detect signals from other neurons or the external environment. And they're known as dendrites. Okay, so these dendrites collect all the signal from the external environment and collect them here at this junction between the soma and the axon. So this small junction right here is known as the axon hillock. So it is here at the axon hillock that kind of adds up all the signals that the dendrites picked up and determines whether or not we'll be able to send an electrical impulse throughout the axon, also known as an action potential. So um, most neurons tend to have only one axon. And as you can see, the axon just carries the signal generated at the axon hillock down to the end of the neuron. Now on this axon, you can see these odd blob shapes that wrap around it in certain segments. These are known as the myelin sheath. And myelin sheath are composed of glial cells, which are the other types of cells found in the nervous system. Now, there are two types of glial cells that can make up the myelin sheath. In this case, these glial cells are made up of something known as Schwann cells. And Schwann cells tend to be found only in the peripheral nervous system. The other type of glial cells that can make up the myelin sheath are known as oligodendrocytes. I'll write it down here. And the purpose of the glial cells when they make up myelin sheath is to help propagate the electrical impulse generate the axon helix faster down the axon. So most myelin is made up of fat cells and it just helps push the signal quicker. Now the spaces in between the myelin sheath, so in a sense the naked axon is known as the nodes of Ranvier. All right, so you have your um, action potential generate from the axon hillock through the axon, and it ends at these axon terminals. Okay. So it's at the axon terminal that you'll be releasing a lot of neurotransmitters, such as acetylcholine, serotonin, or dopamine and other chemical messengers like that. And these chemical messengers have to travel a small gap between this axon terminal and the dendrites of another cell. Now the gap between two neurons is known as a synapse. So 
Generally, most neurons never really make direct contact. Okay, so the axon terminal releases neurotransmitters and it's received by the dendrites of this postsynaptic neuron. to, once again, do the same thing that this neuron did. Add up all the signals and create another action potential throughout the axon. So this brown neuron right here, which received the signal from this black neuron, is known as the postsynaptic neuron, after the synapse. And then this black neuron up here, which sent out that signal, will be known as the presynaptic neuron. These are just some basic kind of spatial terminology that a lot of people use when it comes to the nervous system. So it would be in your best interest to kind of be able to use them almost interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this postsynaptic neuron will once again send or generate an action potential, and then it can synapse once again on maybe another neuron or possibly a target organ, such as your heart or muscles. And this is the basic anatomy of the neuron.